Porto Dolores presentar Lunch. Ambassador, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is mine. Thank you very much for coming today to the Italian residence. Thank you very much for inviting us today. I believe it's the first time you're coming here, so let me show you around the place. Okay, sounds wonderful. Please follow me. All right. So this being the Italian embassy, but in Seoul, uh -huh. uh, we tried to show works of both Italian and Korean artists oh, I see. to uh, install like a dialogue mm -hmm. between the two uh -huh. uh, cultures. cultures yeah. mm -hmm. So this, for instance, is a work by a uh, Korean photographer. Mm -hmm. She's uh, called Kim Soo Kang, uh -huh. and I think she and it's a very Korean thing mm -hmm. to show. You know what this is, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. In Korean, it is bojagi, which uh, means a big uh, fabric to wrap up something inside of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's very Korean. Mm -hmm. On this side, these uh, porcelains, wow. these are Korean. Uh -huh. They're made by an artist called Ri Su Jong mm -hmm. that uh, exhibited in Milan and Paris. Wow. And I like them very much. But this is Italian glass from Murano, near Venice. Uh -huh. After looking around your residence, it really speaks a lot about you, especially about your taste in art. Um, thank you for your hospitality. Thank, thank you very you. much. Um, now, shall we have a seat and continue our conversation? Of course, sure. Uh -huh. So you started your tenure here in Korea three years ago. Um, how has the experience of living here been? The experience has been great. Uh, for a diplomat, uh, working in uh, Korea is a real privilege. This is a unique country in a unique region, uh, which is extremely important for Italy and Europe. And it's also uh, facing some challenges, which make uh, this uh, experience quite uh, extraordinary. Right. Um, which areas of Korea are your favorite? Well, I must say uh, I've traveled a little bit, but my favorite uh, area is probably the East Coast, uh -huh. the Northern East Coast. Donghae. Yes, ha and uh, Hamando. Uh, well, uh, Sochko and uh, right. the villages to uh -huh. north of Sochko, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, they have a lot of uh, personality. Right. Um, also, I discovered that you are a true bird lover and you have a huge interest in ornithology. Um, I know that Korea has many natural habitats for those migratory birds. And have you had a chance to visit any of those sites? A few. Uh, including some uh, islands in the, on the west coast. Mm -hmm. uh, and I must say I love during uh, weekends when I'm free uh -huh. to try to explore new places. But even Seoul is, is interesting. Uh, if you, uh, along the Han River, especially in winter, uh -huh. uh, you can find interesting birds coming from the north of Russia and spending the winter here. I never know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, switching our topic to culture and history, Korea has 5,000 years of history. And I heard that you're very interested in rich Korean history. Um, can you tell us how did it all begin? Well, I believe that as a diplomat, in order to understand 
the present situation. You know, you, you need to know what has happened before. So uh, before coming here, I tried to read some history books on Korea. Uh, of course, in English, because I, unfortunately <laughs> I did not uh, read Hangul. Uh -huh. But uh, this helps you understand better the features uh, of Korean um, present day uh, reality. Right, right. Is there any period that you you tri that triggered your interest most? Well, yes, the Three Kingdoms period is, I think, very interesting because uh, Korea was extremely uh, relevant for uh, the development of its neighboring countries. Uh, it was really a bridge. Uh, towards Japan and with China. And when you think of places like uh, kingdoms like Pekche, for instance, and the enormous influence mm -hmm. they had on Japanese uh, culture and Japanese arts, you understand the importance of Korea. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, when asked which European country resembles Korea the most, um, people would like to answer it might be Italy, because it's peninsular and both of our country have long and rich history. As you just mentioned, um, would there be any comparable point between Korean history and Italian history? Yeah, right. You, you're very true. Uh, not only uh, the two countries are similar in geography, uh, both are peninsulas, both have an island at the at the bottom, uh, both have mountains at the north, isolating them from the rest of the continent. Mm -hmm. But I think the real uh, similarities are uh, both in the, the people. Mm -hmm. We are both uh, very emotional. <laughs> and, and also in history, uh, we both went through a, a bloody war, a war experience which was very uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got out of it also thanks to external help, both by United States, by the way, and had a very quick economic development. Italy had it a bit earlier than Korea, mm -hmm. and then uh, slowed down, mm -hmm. and you're still growing very, very um, fast, but uh, it's quite similar. Other similarities, we don't have many uh, energy or uh, natural resources in our own countries, but we are manufacturing countries mm -hmm. that transform import and export, mm -hmm. so we are the center of uh, trade. And this is also a similarity. So the similarities are not only physical, but also very much historical, economical, and I would say also in, in uh, the way people think and act. Right, and both of our countries have big human power, human resources. Yes, we believe in family values. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, things in common, actually. But, but unfortunately, uh, some distance separates us. There's a geographical, physical distance. Uh -huh. Right. Um, speaking of economy, um, how would you evaluate the status of economy and trade relations between Italy and South Korea? Well, we are very, uh, I must say, I'm personally very satisfied and happy about what is going on. Uh, our trade relations are uh, very uh, strong and uh, growing. And actually, uh, they're also rebalancing themselves because we used to sell to Korea more than what Korea sold to Italy, but that, that is now changing a little bit. It's mm -hmm. becoming more balanced. Mm -hmm. Also, in terms of investment, I must say, things are growing. There has been a great investment by an Italian chemical company with uh, a Korean one last year in uh, Yosu uh, for building a big plant for making uh, artificial synthetic rubber. And uh, one thing that is not mentioned very often is that our companies, Italian companies and Korean companies, are doing great things together in third uh, countries, like in Southeast Asia, uh, in the Middle East, and even in Europe. Korean and Italian companies have been building the third bridge on the Bosphorus in Turkey, and this is uh, uh, one of the ma major engineering uh, achievements of the last few years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's amazing. Um, which areas of cooperation and exchanges do you think needs to be even more improved? Well, I think maybe investment, and when you speak of economic relationship, uh, could be uh, further uh, improved, and we're trying to do so by uh, expanding knowledge on the Italian situation 
in Korea, and I suppose my uh, Korean counterpart in Rome is doing the same. Uh, but apart from the economy, I think, uh, for instance, science and technology, research. Uh, Korea is a, a powerhouse for research. Italy has a tradition of uh, scientific research, especially in basic sciences, so it's quite complementary. And I think uh, we're already doing a lot of things together, but I think we could do more, mm -hmm. and we should do more. Mm -hmm. um, Italian fashion, culture, and art are greatly treasured here in Korea, but I heard that you have more plans to um, promote Italian culture even more here in Korea. Could you tell us? Uh, well, we're trying to. Uh, uh, there's a, um, the Italian uh, Institute of Culture in Korea is the, let's say, the Italian office, uh, cultural office at the embassy, mm -hmm. and it's doing a fantastic job with its director, Paola Cicolella, and we're trying to cover as many fields as we can from cinema, participating to festivals from Busan, to our own Italian film festival here. We have two Italian film festivals, one uh, called Venice in Seoul, which is showing uh, the, every December the movies that has been, have been shown in Venice at the Venice Festival. Mm -hmm. And then the other one called the uh, Italian Film Festival, which is in spring. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also we're trying to uh, support publishing contacts uh, for books and literature. Mm -hmm. And we are uh, regular guests at the Seoul International Book Fair. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, uh, there is uh, exhibitions. We had a lot of beautiful exhibitions. You may remember at the National Museum, the last one was on Pompeii, mm -hmm. but we had uh, other exhibitions, uh, especially on design at the DDP and elsewhere. And music, of course, music is working very well. Uh, I'm going tonight to uh, the Sejong Art Center to listen to Donizetti's Elisir d'Amore with nine Italians uh, that will work together with the Korean counter parts in this edition and uh, I'm really surprised and amazed by by the quality of the music scene in Korea and in Seoul in, Seoul in particular it's it's fantastic it's a uh, world-class absolutely uh, and uh, so I, I think we're trying to cover most of the of the fields and to try to support more uh, our uh, exchanges in the cultural field. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. Um, let's take a look at your efforts to promote Italian culture. This past November, the Italian Embassy hosted an olive oil tasting seminar. It was part of the third edition of the World Week of Italian Cuisine organized in Seoul by the Italian Embassy, and it was part of Italy's global initiative to promote its cuisine in 108 countries around the world. The Italian ambassador to Korea, Marco Della Seta, introduced the theme of this year's event, along with the importance of olive oil in Italian cuisine. Uh, olive oil is typical of the Mediterranean diet, and Mediterranean diet is the topic of the, this year's edition of the week of Italian cuisine in the world that we're celebrating all over the world. He also expressed his passion for his country's food. First allow me to point out that today's seminar on olive oil takes place during the third edition of the week of Italian cuisine in the world. This particular week Italian embassies around the world are promoting Italian cuisine and its high quality ingredients through more than 1,300 events worldwide. I just want to conclude by thanking you for your attention, thanking you for being here, and enjoy the evening. Kamsamida. This seminar introduced nine different types of olive oil five from Italy, and four from Greece and Spain. Also, participants got a chance to compare the world's finest olive oils to those of lesser quality. Paolo Rocci, who ran the session, would first take in the aroma of the oil before tasting it. Is that the ideal way to do it? 
Okay, to detect the quality of the product, first of all, you have to uh, use your nostril to detect uh, the fruit of the product and if there is no defect. If there is no defect on your nostril, you are able to use uh, uh, this product. Uh, the high quality you can uh, find uh, with uh, a very good taste of the fruity, a very healthy fruity taste. Paolo Rochi is CEO of the olive oil company Rochi, based in Tuscany, and an official olive oil master, recognized by the International Olive Oil Council. He seemed very proud of his country's cuisine and ingredients. Uh, apple as sweet, some apple is not. Uh... I hope to develop uh, the skills uh, to love more and more the Italian uh, extra virgin olive oil as all the other food products uh, in Italy. Italy is a fantastic uh, place where we produce uh, fantastic food uh, and uh, everybody is able to detect that, that uh, they are in front of the superior quality, superior process. Uh, uh, production process, process and we have a very proud uh, to supply Korea on the, this special product. Under his guidance, participants learned the different types, aromas and characteristics of Italian olive oil, as well as how to choose and appreciate a high quality product all in two hours. Along with the Mediterranean diet, Ambassador Della Seta hopes to promote regional tourism and itineraries based on Italian culinary arts. Why does he put so much emphasis on exchanges involving food? Food is not about only about uh, eating, it's also about exchanging experiences and experimenting uh, different cultures. I think there is a similarity between Korean food and Italian food, not in taste, not in recipes, of course, but in the concept. Both are about health. And this, is, this makes both Italian and Korean uh, food very uh, successful all around the world. Both Korea and Italy are known for their healthy, delicious, and diverse cuisine. There's no doubt that the power of food will continue to elevate the two nations' ties and bring them closer together. Throughout your tenure, you have always stressed the importance of cultural exchanges. Um, where does that belief come from? Well, I think uh, culture is uh, the most uh, beautiful and uh, natural expression of people. Mm -hmm. And so people to people exchanges pass through culture. And also, uh, culture shows the best of each country. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's a very useful tool of, uh, of my job and of uh, international relations. Mm -hmm. Talking about Italy, uh, we cannot forget about food um, with its pizza, pasta, wine, and gelato. Um, it's one of the most popular food in the world. Um, so how did it become so popular worldwide? Well, I believe one of the reasons is uh, because it's uh, relatively simple. The recipes don't, are not very complicated and it's very relatively healthy too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mediterranean diet is considered as very healthy and we don't transform so much each uh, component of our recipes uh, and our recipes are rather simple. So, and also we tend to use products that come uh, that are local. Oh, and this okay. is also important. So uh, I believe this goes very much into what people expect to have a healthy, a healthy diet and healthy food, which is simple and not too uh, complicated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what is your favorite Italian food, Ambassador? Well, I must say my favorite Italian food is risotto, uh -huh. which is a sort of 
rice soup we make with a special kind of rice which grows right. in northern Italy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, it's impossible to think of Italian food without a warm plate of pasta. And I heard that it played a very important role um, after unification in 1880 um, in shaping Italian's national identity. And I believe we have very similar food, which is Pyongyang Nengmyeon. It's a cold noodle, and it symbolizes for um, peace and reunification. Do you think food can restore nation's identity even after decades of um, division? Well, I believe so, and I hope so. I ate uh, Pyongyang Nyam Nyam in, uh, both in Pyongyang and here, and I must say that uh, I like it very much. Right. So I really <laughs> hope that this can be contribute to uh, peace and stability in, in the region and in Korea. Mm -hmm. um, Italian cuisine is very popular in Korea, and do you have any plans to even more promote Italian food here in Korea? Well, indeed, we do. Uh, the, we, we are organizing a, an Italian uh, week of Italian uh, cuisine, and which will involve uh, identifying real Italian restaurants and giving them a sort of certificate, which will identify. Will uh, will also have some uh, scientific moments to explain why the Mediterranean diet is healthy. So um, yes, we, we are trying to support uh, this trend, which is already very uh, working very well. Uh, I know Italian food is very successful here, and I'm very happy about it uh -huh, uh -huh. and proud. Um, speaking of Korean culture, um, what is the status of Korean culture in Italy? Well, you know, amazingly enough, uh, Korea was not really very well known until, let's say, uh, 20 years ago. But uh, thanks to your very good, the very good job of my Korean colleagues in, in Rome, the, <laughs> the, the, the Korean ambassador, and of your efforts, now Korea is very well, uh, is very popular and increasingly so. Also, uh, thanks, I must say, to the uh, Korean uh, wave. Uh, you know, uh, K-pop is increasingly popular. And this is shown by the number of people studying Korean language in Italy, which is growing, and the number of Italians coming here to study in Korean universities. There are about 200 Italian students studying in uh, Korea, which I think is, is a good uh, result. Um, this is my last question. Um, how do you want to be remembered after your term as an Italian ambassador to Korea? Well, as a friend of Korea. Uh, it's a country that I like very much. I'm very happy, as I said at the start of this interview. I'm honored and privileged to, to be serving here. And uh, I, of course, when you're a diplomat, you cannot stay all your life, which is the, the disadvantage of my job. But uh, I, I really would like to be remembered as a friend of this country and of its uh, people. Uh -huh, I see. Ambassador, thank you very much for your time today. No, thank you, and thank you to Arirang TV. <laughs>